it's February and it's so warm. My friends, let's take this racing bike and that racing bike. Let's go outside. One more bike here. Let's do this. Here we are, my friends. We've got three bikes here, and this is not a tutorial about uh, buying a used bike because I'm doing another episode about that. So what's been used, how much it's been used, how to recognize that. Today we are talking about what things to look at instead of looking just at Old Tigra 105 or what, what group set it is in order to get the bike which you will absolutely love because road cycling is also amazing and you can be riding for hours without, without any back pain and any other pain. So this bike, this is about $700 bike, maybe $600 bike. This is about $1,200 bike and this is about $3,500 bike, new and carbon, these are alloy. And I must tell you uh, that I'm as much happy riding this bike as this bike as this bike, though this bike is my favorite because it's kind of a sweet spot. You want to be able to ride long hours in comfortable position. And the geometry of the bike is something that a $500 can have, $1,500 can have. So what should we be looking at? This is head tube. And as you can see, this is the the most modern 2029 um, endurance bike it's called Merida Scultura Endurance. This head tube is huge. That means we are sitting upright. It's not a city bike, but we are sitting more upright, not as aggressive as we used to do 10 and more years ago. And that makes you able to ride here on the drop, on the drops instead of here more often and more time because your back will not be stretching as much and you'll not be having that much pressure here on the tip of the saddle because you are not leaning forwards that much. This is important. You can find such nice head tube on a modern uh, bike. You can find it. This is the oldest bike from this, uh, these three and it also has a huge head tube. This is the Stork Vision Lite. But this bike, Cannondale Cat 10, which comes from 2014-15, has more aggressive head tube, which means that you are leaning forward more. Uh, and you should be aware of that. I'm fine with it because, as you can see, I haven't cut the, the steering tube so, much, so that my handlebars are still um, high enough. The second thing is how long the bike is. And we should not measure just the top tube length but your reach which is the distance between this point and this point okay but vertically so how long the bike is measuring from the bottom bracket to the head tube because that's how far our our pedals will be from the handlebars and you cannot change this you can change uh, the length of the stem you can change the height of the saddle but this this length you cannot change on the bike it shouldn't be too long reach uh, reach are shorter now on the endurance bikes and you can still race on them and absolutely crush it because you'll be riding more often on the drops not being that much stre stretched out so the geometry is number one and you don't pay extra money for better geometry. It just depends on the model. It can be older bike, newer bike. It just depends on the model. Second thing is the saddle. You just need to find the right saddle for yourself. I'm going to show you my favorite saddle just in a second. And then the tires. The tires are very important and let me show you why. Here we have our $1,200 or $1,300 used Canada Cut 10. And we've got 25C, two of 25 millimeters, roughly, we, we can say that, uh, uh, wide tires. Uh, as you can see, there is not much space between the tire and the fork. It's same on the rear triangle, between the, the wheel and the rear triangle, uh, but it fits. I can still remove the wheel because it fits the calipers here. And I'm fine with this. 25C is cool. I would say it's a cool starting point for a really um, comfortable road bike tire. Here we have the older bike 
and we can clearly see it's got also the it says here 25 millimeters sometimes it says 25 c because the width of the tire also depends on the width of this wheel but you can clearly see that 25 is maximum that you could put into this fork uh, i could put more on the cannon cannondale but here this is the maximum amount now just look at this it says 32 this is almost a gravel tire because uh, you will be able to ride on the gravel maybe not on such a sand like like here but i've got some gravel road up there and i have no problems using this bike more no problem using this bike but this bike rides beautifully it will also be more puncture resistance especially uh, the pinch flats pinch flat is when you hit something and this tire goes all the way to the rim and then the rim will cut the inner tube which is between the rim and the tire the wider it is the better for the pinch flats but i would say 32 is, is a lot and you can see how much space there still is this is a modern endurance bike but i must tell you that 25 on this one is still a sweet spot for me hello b uh, but i could also fit in uh, 27 and that would be fine now about marketing carbon frames are light stiff and compliant that's nice but the carbon compliance against well-made aluminum i'm gonna tell you you're not gonna feel the difference you're gonna feel the difference in the tire width because also uh, on the wider tires you'll be able to put less tire uh, pressure less air pressure than on the um, on the thinner ones that's why the tire is more important than the carbon versus aluminum aluminum is also more environmental friendly and cheaper much cheaper okay the next important thing is the drivetrain and here we have the ideal drivetrain why is it so we have here so-called compact crankset that means that the big chain ring has 50 teeth these and the small one has 34. the uh, semi-compact crankset like on this Cannondale will have 52 and 36 that's the semi-compact and now this is too much for me because on the flat roads riding on this training is difficult i need to use I'm, I'm like in the half of the cassette or maybe even closer to those uh, lower gears i would love to to have 34 50 here or maybe even less like on the cyclocross bikes and i will probably get it so don't look at the group set as much as what it actually gives you 50 34 well made for endurance racing bike it it will still um, enable you to ride very fast down the hill and here also we have the cassette which has 11 through 34 teeth that means when you change the gear to the 34th here and you've got th sorry 32 32 and 34 here you'll be able to ride up the hills beautifully and maybe also if you don't have uh, too much uh, of the fitness lower gears will always be of help you're not gonna get mad at you so so fast because those gears will help you uh, ride nicely and on this bike we even have a triple crankset and it's not something i would recommend having but for starters and those who live in the mountains this might be very good and then even the cassette which is 1125 only would be okay with the triple crankset so i have 1125 there 1132 which is great for mountains here and 1128 which is okay if i had the compact crankset right here so the brand and the model is not as important as how many teeth you have on the cassette and on the crankset actually then but what about the the number of the gear on the cassette it doesn't matter this is 11 speed that one is 11 speed too which is great and that one is 10 speed 10 speed is enough uh, you're gonna have it on the newest triagra this is the old old tigra newest triagra will have 10 speed sora will have 9 speed it's still great and claris will have 8 speed it's still fine as long as you have 
nice number of the teeth of those lowest and highest gear. So the geometry is really important. You don't want to ride in the uncomfortable position. You want to have comfy position, nice saddle. The seat post is also pretty important. If it would be 27.2 of the diameter, it will be uh, more flexy. That's great. And then probably the disc brakes. Do, you, uh, do I need disc brakes? I would say if you live in the UK, a lot, lots of rain and very hilly terrain, uh, this might help. You're not going to wear down your rims uh, so fast. The braking performance on the caliper brakes, good caliper brakes, is amazing. Uh, these disc brakes will be uh, more powerful, but I would also say if you want to have nice aero carbon uh, wheels, it's better to have disc brakes because you're not wearing down uh, the carbon actually. And the caliper brakes with the carbon braking surface was actually never very, very good. So disc brakes for super aero carbon wheels and for lots of water and, and hilly terrain and the calipers all the way for most of us. I hope this was helpful. The bike should be comfortable. We should like also the graphics on it, the shaping on the frame. Uh, it doesn't have to be very expensive. It doesn't have to be carbon. If it has the external cables, that's even easier to maintain. Uh, the aero features, I'm not really a great fan. Most of the aero features on most of the bikes, in my opinion, are for super, super pro. And for us, it's more like a marketing thing. So road bikes are awesome. Try those and in the future we're going to focus on how to find out if this used bike or that used bike has been used or abused. We'll see. Don't forget to subscribe for more. We're going to be doing lots of fun stuff this year. See ya. Hold on. Baby, just hold on. I'll be coming home. Hold on, I said, baby, just hold on.